Hey everyone, it's Steve Spangler from The Spangler Effect and another really cool demonstration from our science archive. I want to show you how to make a fire tornado originally uh, taught to me by a wonderful guy by the name of Bob Becker out of Kirkwood, Missouri. He was on a lecture series and, and showed it. I'm going to show you a little twist in kind of how we brought it uh, to something that may even be easier for you to make. The first question was this, was what would happen if you spin fire? So the little setup that I have here is a crucible on this board and there is... Um, uh, uh, there are these little pieces of sponge that I have soaked in lighter fluid. So a little bit of lighter fluid on those. And uh, I like to use the lighter fluid. I know that there's an inclination, if you're a demonstrator, to want to use um, ethanol and color it and whatever else. And that's fine, but it really is very effective uh, this way. And that fire kind of uh, uh, works its way up. And I think you'll like it. So try it with the lighter fluid. This, Lazy Susan, right? So it's our little, and it's been through the war and back. There's no question about it. You can see the uh, fire and burn marks and everything. All right, so here we go. As always, if you're doing anything with fire, take all this into the proper safety precautions, fire extinguisher close by. The question was what would happen if you spun the fire? So when we light it like this and we spin, nothing very exciting happens at all. It just spins. Now we know that hot air rises and so that flame of course uh, uh, dances upward, but uh, we wanted to simulate what happens when the air whips through, for example in a forest fire, the air whips through this uh, these trees. And as it whips through the trees, you've got some angular momentum going on. And so as it starts to work its way through, what happens to that air that surrounds the fire and how does it affect the fire? So this is the uh, the tubing or the little screen that I wanted to show you that was originally uh, shown to me. This is just replacement wire or replacement screen found at the hardware store. You can kind of see that it's all been seamed together here as well. All right, so this is... Uh, a little uh, top heavy, kind of harder to spin. That's where we had rods that came up this way and you can kind of see why we were looking for something else to be able to do with it. But I wanted to show you at least the original. So this sits here like this. And so now as you spin, watch what happens. As you spin it now, ah, it's great. It kind of uh, picks up. The, uh, the fire starts to dance a little bit and you start to get this fire tornado. Oh, that's pretty good. That's It is looking pretty good. And uh, on a new segment that I did years ago, it's where we took and actually put a balloon filled with hydrogen up at the very top with a, a longer column to see whether or not the fire, the flame could dance up and eventually catch that on fire. And it was very, very cool. All right, so uh, a, a great setup and kudos to Bob Becker for a, a wonderful demonstration kind of showing how a fire tornado works. I wanted to try some other things and as is the case, uh, as a science demonstrator, we're always looking for different, uh, different ways to do the same demonstration. And I was at one of those places that we all love if you're a demonstrator and that is Ikea. So <laughs> take a look at this. How could you beat a Lazy Susan for $7, right? So here is this wonderfully smooth turntable. I've seen people do this with phonographs and I've seen them do it with these great motor contraptions. This was just easy to pack and to travel with when I was doing professional development for teachers. So here is our spin, got it? And this is simply a, a trash can from Ikea as well. It's got that mesh material and so that's perfect. A lot sturdier and I can carry other things in it as well. So this just has to be positioned in the middle so that it doesn't kind of wobble. That's pretty good, good. And I'm using a Petri dish or something to be able to extinguish the fire. But this goes in the top like that and uh, see if we can just look at it. So again, here's what's happening. That hot air rises, but that spinning piece in the screen is able to catch those molecules and start to spin them. And so it's really that centripetal force or as you see the angular momentum of those molecules going around and around, coupled with the rising air that gives you that kind of tornado feel and tornado look. And that why uh, uh, fires can dance from treetop to treetop and spread when the winds whip through and how dangerous that can be with firefighters. All right, so here is, here is our flame. Watch what happens when we spin. This makes it really, 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 oh, and that tornado is just beautiful, isn't it? If you take a look in the very center there, you get that vortex in the very middle. That fire vortex is just gorgeous. And uh, what a great way to do it, but what a, a strong demonstration to be able to show how those flames can jump from treetop to treetop. Of course, anything that's worth doing is worth 
overdoing. So in the Ellen Show, we had to make it just a little bit bigger with this spinning contraption. And sometimes I'll really be honest with you, bigger is not necessarily better for the overall effectiveness. I think this tabletop version is just a wonderful way to be able to demonstrate it, but it is nice to uh, be able to have the props department at Warner Brothers help you with something that's just a little bit bigger as well. It's a fire tornado. Take all those safety precautions. As always, you can find more of our experiments at stevespanglerscience.com. Subscribe to our other YouTube channels, Six Science and uh, Spangler Science TV, and uh, follow us on social media and contribute and ask some of those questions we'd love to answer back.